Hi, this is Vesu from Chaos. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at the process of how we can create a realistic looking metal material using 3ds Max and V-Ray. We will also look at how we can add some edge wear, dents and scratches to the metal surface to make it look more believable. We will start by creating a base metal material. We can then add layers on top of it to add more and more details. We will add a layer making the metal surface look like it has gone through some oxidation, having some rust spots here and there, some discoloration and so on. After that, we will add details such as scratches and wear around the edges to make the metal object look like it has been used for a while. And finally, we will add some dirt that accumulated over time in the crevices of the object. With all that being said, let's get started. Here in 3ds Max, we have a simple scene setup. What we need to do is create a metal material for the Nutcracker asset. We have a standard V-Ray material applied to the object. I'll go ahead and give it a name. This is going to be our metal base material. There are many different types of metal materials that could be created. We can use the Chaos Cosmos browser to choose some metal materials or even use the built-in presets that come standard with the V-Ray material to create some silver, gold or iron materials for example. We can use those as a starting point and further modify them to create something different and more complex. The first thing we need to do to create a metal material is to turn on the metalness parameter. We can do so by setting the metalness value all the way to 1. This immediately turns the material into a very shiny chrome-like surface. As a next step, let's adjust the glossiness level. I'll set the reflection color to white and lower the glossiness value to let's say 0.7. This way, we get not so mirror-like reflections. As a final step, let's darken the diffuse color a little bit. Great, this would serve very well as our base material. If we aim for a brand new surface, then we can even stop here. But let's explore further how to make the material look used and damaged. As a next step, we need to add some surface details, indicating that the material has been exposed to the elements, maybe some rust spots here and there. Basically, we need to make it look older. In real life, those processes of oxidation are happening on the surface itself. But in our case here, instead of modifying the material we just created, we can make another one and layer it on top of this one. We can use the V-Ray Blend material to layer multiple materials like that. I'll go ahead and create one Blend material. The Blend material is structured as having a channel for a base material and for multiple coats, which are going to be the different layers. There are also channels for the Blend amounts, which we can drive using texture maps to mask off different parts of the surface and blend multiple materials together. I'll go ahead and plug in our metal material into the base material slot. This object has a normal map which has been applied to the surface using V-Ray bump material. So let me plug in the blend material we just created to that bump material. Good. Of course nothing changes so far and that is because we need to add more layers. I'll duplicate the existing metal material and plug it into the code 1 slot. By default, we get a 50-50 mix between the two materials. We can control how much we see from each of them by changing the blend amount color. I'll switch it to 100% to the newly created material for now. Later, we'll create a mask for that blend amount. First, I'll darken the overall appearance by lowering the diffuse amount a little. Since metal materials are very reflective, we can start introducing randomness in the reflection glossiness. This way we'll get a more interesting looking surface and sell the illusion of the object being used for some time. Let's start by creating a composite map first. We'll use it to layer different texture maps. I'll plug it into the glossiness map slot. In layer 1, I'll plug in a noise map. This way we can create the randomness we need. I'd like to create some sort of subtle rust spots. So in the areas where the rust occurs, the surface should have less glossy reflection. To create rust spots, we need to make the noise map more contrasty. We can do so by bringing the high and low noise threshold values closer together. I'll also decrease the size way down until some spots starts to form up. To introduce more complicated and interesting forms, I'll switch the noise type to fractal. 
and bump up the level's amount to a higher value. Now, we get areas where the glossiness amount is at 1 or completely white and areas where it's at 0 or pitch black. We wouldn't want 100% glossiness anywhere, so let's tone down the white component. Instead of having just those black spots, we can go one level deeper and use another noise map to drive the black component. I'll duplicate the existing one and plug it into color 1 slot. I'll increase the size slightly to make the dark spots more spread out. I'll also lower the contrast slightly by pushing apart the noise threshold values. And finally, I'll change the black color to a dark gray. This way, the dark spots will have a little bit of reflection glossiness in them, but still be less than the rest. Great! The differences in the glossiness amount across the surface are very subtle, but they definitely make the material much more interesting and believable. Now we can add some scratches as well, to make the level of detail richer. You can look online or even make some textures of scratches yourself. I've prepared a couple of very simple textures that would work nicely. I'll use the V-Ray Comtex node to add the two textures together, making sure the operator is set to add. I'll use this texture to mask off the scratched up parts. To do that, let's add another layer in our composite map and use the V-Ray Color node to set a glossiness amount for the scratches. Again, this adds a very subtle difference in the glossiness amount. At the moment, the color of our metal surface is absolutely uniform. We need to add slight variations in the areas where the rust spots and the scratches are. We can take advantage of the already existing noise maps and duplicate them. We've used them to create our diffuse component. So our current diffuse value is 35. So I'll set the color to for both noises to 35 as well. Let me also plug it into the diffuse channel slot. And now I'll change the color one component of the noise map to a dark reddish color. This should represent little rust spots. Very nice. Let's also set a color for the scratches by changing the V-Ray color node to a darker value. Now we can clearly see them showing through. Nice. We have this damaged metal layer overriding the clean basic metal layer we created in the beginning. We can now create some dents and edge wear by masking off some of the surface, mostly around the edges and showing the basic metal in those areas instead. To make the mask more visible while creating it, I'll temporarily swap the basic metal material with a plain red material. Next, I'll create a V-Ray curvature node to help me find where the geometry edges are. I'll plug that into the Blend 1 slot. First, let's set the model to convex. I'll lower the radius to 0.15. We need to invert the mask to affect only the edges. We can use an output node and simply enable the invert checkbox. I'll lower the sample spread as well to get a thinner line across the edges. To boost the mask's intensity, we can increase the output max color value to let's say 5. And also check the ignore bump checkbox to make sure that the bump or normal map are not affecting our edge mask. Great! We need to break up those perfect lines, which we could do by overlapping some kind of a noise map. We can use the dent node from 3ds Max general maps. To see what it does, let me plug it into the blend one slot temporarily. I'll lower the size significantly. Next, I'll reverse this effect by swapping the colors. Let's also increase the iterations to increase the level of detail. Now we can use a V-Ray Comp text node to blend this dent map with the curvature node. So let's plug both of them in and set the blending mode to maximum. We can adjust the intensity of the dents if needed. In our case here, I'll change the black value of the dent map to a dark gray one. This way the dents would not be so contrasty and would blend better with the rest of the metal surface. And now let's change the dummy material with the actual basic metal material that we've prepared earlier. Great! Now the edges look worn out and overall the object appears more used. Alright, usually over time an object would collect dirt in areas that are hard to reach. Let's add that to our material here to make it look even better. Let's use our red dummy material again. 
and plug it into the next layer of our blend material. We can use the V-Ray Dirt node to create our mask. Let me create one and connect it to the Blend 2 slot. I'll swap the black and white colors first. As you can notice, the lower part of the object is getting completely masked off because it considers the ground as well. To fix this, let's enable Consider the same object only option. We can reduce the radius to 2 so it doesn't spread out so much. Great! Now, instead of red diffuse, we can go for a dark brown color, almost black. We can even use the same diffuse nodes that we've set up for the metal surface. So go ahead and plug the noise node into the diffuse map slot. With the dirt layer completed, we can consider our metal material finished. In this video, we went over the process of creating a realistic metal material. We started with building a base metal shader. After that, we proceeded to adding multiple layers on top of it. One layer added some oxidation and rust spots over the surface. Another layer added some damage around the edges. Finally, we finished by adding dirt around certain areas of the object. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and helpful. Please share your suggestions for tutorials for other types of materials in the comments below. Thank you for watching.